From the leading edge of new discoveries to the front lines of disasters, from family safety and security to the limits of exploration on this planet and of other worlds, and to virtually every part of our daily lives, Radio Communications continues to find new ways to make the impossible possible, benefiting human society in the most remarkable ways. Amateur Radio, also called Ham Radio, opens a door making it easy for anyone to learn, use, and discover the power and possibilities of radio communications. Just for example, Amateur Radio can provide the ability to experiment, design, and build on the latest communication technologies, or simply a way to meet and enjoy new friends. It can connect people in your region, around the world, and across cultures establishing international goodwill, or can simply be used to provide safety and security for individuals and families wherever they live or wherever they may travel. Amateur radio can also be used as a powerful educational tool in schools and other programs to stimulate the interest and imagination of younger and older minds alike. Even when the power's out and the internet, television, landlines, and cell phones all go down, amateur radio can easily provide the capability to communicate across the street, around the world, and even into space. Throughout history, people have always had a passion for communicating and finding better ways to do it. In the beginning, man resorted to shouting to make himself heard beyond his immediate surroundings. Then as now, the human voice could only carry so far. But later, when people learned to master fire, they used signal fires, placing them on hilltops or other clearly visible landmarks. In ancient America, Europe, and China, signal fires were used to quickly communicate important messages across greater distances. It wasn't until the 18th century that the use of the optical telegraph and other optical systems began making it possible to send messages across longer distances. The average distance between optical stations was typically only 10 kilometers, but it could be up to three times that across the water. At the end of the 19th century, Italian inventor Guglielmo Marconi invented wireless signaling and in 1901 he managed to transmit a Morse-coded signal nearly 3,000 kilometers across the Atlantic Ocean from Cornwall, England to Newfoundland, Canada. It was at this point in history that radio communications was born, and since then scientists and inventors have built on this understanding to develop an amazing array of technologies that have benefited us all. I would challenge you to think about all the ways that radio frequency technology benefits our world. At the end of this video, we'll provide many more examples, but here are just a few applications where radio technology is used today in our lives. Radio technology allows amateur radio operators to communicate anywhere in the world, and even into space, without depending on complicated communication networks or infrastructure-dependent systems. And it makes possible virtually all of our entertainment systems that we use and enjoy today, both inside and outside of our homes. Public service organizations throughout the world also depend on radio technologies as a critical part of their systems that provide services to their communities and to save lives. And within the medical industry, radio devices help to save lives, reduce suffering, and improve patients' everyday lives. Radio technology is also used to detect and warn us of all types of dangers and disasters, providing early warning and protection for people throughout the world and it provides a very accurate and secure way to identify people and objects and to detect many different types of safety and security risks. On air, land, and sea, radio technology makes it possible for us to easily navigate our world, and all of our mobile phones, satellite systems, wireless computers, and networks are made possible by its use. Radio frequency technology has also become an increasingly essential element in many areas of advanced research and development, opening new doorways to many exciting new discoveries that are reshaping our world. And it provides very high levels of convenience and ease of use in many parts of our individual lives. We even find radio technology being used under the earth for many interesting and challenging applications that would otherwise not be possible and far above, in orbit around the Earth, it is being used in many creative ways to watch our planet, protecting and providing many benefits for human society. 
Radio technology even makes it possible for us to learn about other worlds. For example, it has been used to survey and study many different planets, and it is now being used on the surface of Mars to explore the planet, to remotely control the Mars rovers, and to communicate with the Earth. Radio technology also makes it possible for systems like the Hubble telescope to operate outside of the Earth's atmosphere and teach us about the deepest reaches of our universe by enabling communications, remote control, and the transmission of images to Earth. And at about the time that this video is being published, at more than 18 billion kilometers from Earth, something remarkable is happening. The Voyager 1 spacecraft launched in 1977, is now passing through the helio sheath. Voyager 1 is now the furthest man-made object from Earth, and it is continuing quickly on its journey to soon enter interstellar space. And on board, its 23-watt radio system continues to communicate, sending us new scientific information and teaching us about its surroundings. As you can see from our homes and schools, in our vehicles and workplaces, under the earth, above the earth, and into the far reaches of space, you will find the use of radio communications technology everywhere. It's hard to imagine our world today if all of these capabilities were to simply disappear. Yet the use of radio is relatively new and young to human society, just slightly more than 100 years old. But more than any other communications method or technology, in this short amount of time, it has changed our world and understanding of the universe in an amazing way, and it's really only the beginning. As communications technology continues to evolve at an unprecedented rate, we will evolve with it. And all of this is made possible by that invisible natural resource we call the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is a term used to describe all possible frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. Everything emits radiation, but only at certain frequencies. From radio waves to gamma rays, most of this radiation in the universe is in fact invisible to us. The propagation of these waves, consisting of alternating electric and magnetic fields, is not much different than waves crossing an ocean. Like all waves, they have a frequency measured in hertz, which counts the number of waves that pass by a point in one second. They also have a wavelength that measures the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the next. Different frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum are better suited due to different physical phenomena for different applications. However, they are all fundamentally the same. Radio waves, the lowest frequency in the spectrum, are no exception and range from 3 kHz to 300 GHz. This includes the frequencies just above human hearing all the way up into extremely high microwave frequencies. Many radio waves can be broadcast at the same time. As long as they are transmitted on different frequencies, none of them will interfere with the others. Amateur radio operators are granted the permission by most nations of the world to use and experiment with specific frequency bands that are spread out across most of this radio frequency spectrum. So why amateur radio? Well, some people are attracted by the ability to communicate across the country, around the world, or even with astronauts on space missions. Many volunteer their time, equipment, and knowledge to prepare and provide support to their communities in times of disaster. Others build and experiment with electronics. Computer hobbyists find packet radio to be a low-cost way to expand their ability to communicate. Those with a competitive streak enjoy DX contests, where the object is to see how many distant locations they can contact. And some simply like the safety, security, and convenience of a technology that gives them portable communication anytime, anywhere. But all seem to use it for one thing in common, and that is to open the door to making new lifelong friendships made over the air or through participation in the many amateur radio organizations, activities, and events that occur around the world. So who can use ham radio? The answer is anyone. Amateur radio operators come from all walks of life. Movie stars, missionaries, doctors, students and politicians, truck drivers, and just plain folks. They are all ages, sexes, income levels, and nationalities, and include people with all types of abilities and disabilities. Worldwide, there are millions of licensed amateur radio operators from virtually every country of the world. Whether they prefer Morse code on an old brass telegraph key, voice communication on a handheld radio, or computer messages transmitted through satellites, 
all have an interest in what's happening in the world and they use radio to reach out. These amateur radio operators form a worldwide community using the airwaves with every conceivable means of communications technology. It consists of people who enjoy learning and being able to transmit voice, data, and pictures through the air to unusual places both near and far without depending on commercial systems. Most of the time, amateur radio is the most fun you can have with a radio. It's a way to talk with people around the world, to send an email without any sort of internet connection, and to keep in touch with friends across town or across the country. In most countries, using amateur radio requires a license, but a license is easy to acquire and gives radio amateurs permission to use and access more frequencies, bands, and power levels that are otherwise not available. But amateur radio also has a serious face as a very important emergency communication system. National agencies around the world have created special amateur radio services to fill the need for a group of experts with stations who can provide backup emergency communications in times of disaster. This has become a vital worldwide service that has rendered aid, saving lives again and again when regular communication systems have failed. So what do radio amateurs do during and after disasters? It's important to remember that our world does rely heavily on the infrastructure that makes our cell phones, landlines, and internet all work. However, sometimes things go wrong. These systems get overloaded, they suffer power outages, or they simply fail. There is so much that can go wrong in the infrastructure of these systems, and this is where amateur radio comes in. Amateur radio operators are most likely to be active after man-made or natural disasters that damage these lines of communications due to power outages and destruction of telephone, cellular, internet, and other infrastructure-dependent systems. In these situations, radio is typically the only way to get communications into and out of an area. In case of disaster, whether it is accidental or natural, amateur radio operators can be deployed rapidly on a volunteer basis, providing a communication system that is both functional and efficient. Using their own time, equipment, and knowledge, they set up and operate organized communication networks locally for governmental and emergency officials, as well as provide non-commercial communication for private citizens affected by disasters. This provides a critical public service that would otherwise not be possible. In many cases, it is the amateur radio operators that are the first to respond to disasters, providing primary or supplemental communications as emergency response services set up camps and command posts and get organized. In these situations, radio amateurs also regularly provide the capabilities for the emergency response crews to reach home. These volunteer radio amateurs are constantly working to ensure they are always ready for disasters before they occur. They regularly maintain their own emergency communication systems, maintain and manage remote repeater networks, and design and implement new communication stations as needed. They also manage and regularly practice emergency communications in organized communication traffic nets and in exciting and educational events called field days. Field days have been proven to be a great way to test emergency communications operation, assure radio operators can be deployed rapidly in response to a disaster, and to ensure that reliable communications can be made using only emergency resources. You will also see radio amateurs making themselves available to provide public safety during parades, fairs, and many other special events. They do this typically to provide a community service, and of course it's fun, but it also helps them maintain their own radio skills and emergency preparedness. The public services provided by amateur radio operators are coordinated by different informal and formal groups that manage communication during emergencies. At the local or regional level, amateurs may participate in local emergency organizations or organize local traffic nets. At the wider level, amateurs are often involved with regional emergency management operations, and in addition, some amateurs volunteer to operate at the national level in cooperation with amateur radio services that are organized by various governmental organizations and agencies. Most of these amateur radio services have formal agreements with their governments in their countries. In some locations, amateurs also provide important messaging services for those without communications or they even get involved in collecting and sharing emergency weather information with national weather services for analysis and dissemination to the public. At the end of this presentation, 
we will provide more information about how you can identify and contact the different amateur radio services and organizations in your country. For many years, government agencies have recognized and valued these public services provided by amateur radio operators. They also recognize and value how radio amateurs throughout history have advanced radio communications technology, technical skills, and international goodwill. And as a result, they provide licensed amateur radio operators with the permission to use and experiment within frequency bands spread across the entire radio spectrum, including frequencies from just above the AM broadcast band all the way up into extremely high microwave frequencies. It is sometimes easy to forget that this radio frequency spectrum is a very limited natural resource and that it is used in ways that are very important and essential to the safety and well-being of the world's population. Because of this, and the fact that radio waves do not stop at international borders, frequency allocation is controlled by international law with the support of the nations of the world. The International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, oversees how much radio spectrum is set aside for amateur radio transmissions. The ITU is the steward of the global framework of the spectrum, working to ensure non-interference while also promoting its use for the best interest of all countries and the people of the world. Individual amateur stations are free to use any frequency within authorized frequency ranges, which may vary by country and the class of the station license holder. The modes and types of allocations within each range of frequencies is called a band plan, and may be set by international agreements, national regulations, and also by agreements between amateur radio operators. National authorities regulate the amateur usage of these radio bands, and some bands may not be available or may have restrictions on usage in certain countries or region of the world. For amateur radio bands that differ by region, international agreements define permissions and restrictions for their use. So what can we do with amateur radio? Well, the number of ways that amateur radio operators are able to communicate is perhaps limited only by the imagination. But here are some of the most common methods that you might see radio amateurs use today. Amateur radio operators can communicate using voice in many ways, across many different types of modulation and protocols. They also use an experiment with digital data. For example, for text and data, Morse code is still widely used. Packet, radio teletype, and PSK are also other ways to communicate, and even faster transmissions are being developed using methods which can send almost any form of digital data. Many also use television to send pictures over the air. The most popular modes of communication for video include amateur television, slow scan television, and facsimile. Some amateurs even experiment and develop and test their own new modes of communications, and others choose to design and build their own antenna systems and other radio system components. There is a lot of freedom in the use of these radio frequencies, and amateur radio operators seem to always find new and creative ways to combine these for special activities. A few examples include long-range radio remote control, which might include controlling model planes, boats, cars, helicopters, trucks and tanks over great distances. Earth-Moon Earth Communications, also known as Moon Bounce, which is a radio communication technique that reflects signals off the moon to reach distant Earth-based receivers. Internet Relay Linking, which is a project that links amateur radio stations around the world using voice over internet, establishing a system using both radio and internet links for communications. Low Transmitter Power, or QRP, an activity that challenges operators to transmit at the lowest possible power levels while also aiming to maximize one's effective range. The launching of high altitude repeaters and observatories, typically using balloons to lift amateur radio equipment of all types high into the atmosphere for many different types of uses and experiments. And OSCAR, an abbreviation for orbital satellite carrying amateur radio, made up of satellites in space that can be used for free by licensed amateur radio operators for voice, data, and other methods of communications. In the world of amateur radio, these capabilities are all accessible by amateurs. The only limit is the imagination, and there truly is something for everyone. People's fascination and interest in ham radio is something that also naturally spans languages and cultures, as well as geographical and political borders. This is yet another reason why you will find radio amateurs in virtually every country. Through worldwide communications and events, amateur radio inherently promotes cultural awareness, cultural understanding, and international goodwill. 
This creates the opportunities to make friends in any corner of the world, to practice a new language, or to learn about foreign customs and lifestyles. And learning is something that I believe is one of the most important aspects of amateur radio. It seems to easily capture the interest and enhance the creativity of young people. It also creates tremendous opportunities in so many academic fields and so many areas of learning. And it does all of this by bringing to life the science and teamwork that makes learning more exciting. Just for example, many amateur radio projects and activities commonly mix elements of electronics, physics, electrical engineering, mathematics, mechanical engineering, construction, off-the-grid power sources, and other concepts that were undreamed of just a few years ago. These projects and activities also provide the opportunity for students to experience and learn important life skills like teamwork, planning, problem solving, project management, and communication skills that will help the students be more successful as they prepare to enter and begin their adult lives and careers. Amateur radio can be used very smartly to improve learning and to spark the interest, imagination, and creativity of students in many ways. It allows them to experience, touch, see, and understand what they learn instead of just cramming in facts from books and lectures. Bringing amateur radio into schools is a great opportunity. In fact, amateur radio has already been integrated into school curriculums in many countries of the world and is creating great success in improving learning, motivation, and results. But amateur radio is not just a powerful educational tool. It also provides the freedom to explore, dream, experiment, and discover. In fact, the amateur radio frequencies are the last remaining place in the usable radio spectrum where anyone as an individual can develop and experiment with wireless communications. Amateurs not only can make and modify their own equipment, but they can create whole new ways of doing things. Because of this, radio amateurs have historically always been on the leading edge of many new technologies. For example, amateurs were experimenting with technologies like television and personal computers long before they became consumer products in the home. In many different ways, many radio amateurs enjoy being creators, not just consumers of wireless technology. Whether you want to experiment with leading edge technologies, help others keep in touch with family and friends, talk with the other side of the world, serve your community, or have a radio for emergency communications whenever the power goes out. It's easy to get started in amateur radio. The best way to get started and learn is to listen to amateurs on the radio bands, read about amateur radio, or best of all, meet and speak with radio amateurs in your area. Most amateur radio operators will welcome your interest and take pride in their ability to Elmer or teach newcomers the ropes to get them started in the hobby. They can explain the license requirements in your country, guide you in preparing for any examinations, and advise you on what to consider when selecting your first radio. It's easy to get on the air, and we'll provide some links to information to help you learn more at the end of this video. In just a few short years, radio communications has completely reshaped our world and daily lives, and it will continue to advance at an unprecedented rate. Amateur radio will continue to bring people together throughout the world, and it will continue to provide the opportunities to explore, dream, and discover the power and possibilities of radio communications technology. Amateur radio is a hobby and a privilege that gives us the world, a world of learning, a world of safety and security, and a world of helping others. We may not know today what the world will look like in another 100 years, but to be sure, radio technology will continue to evolve, and our world will evolve with it, and it will never be the same. And most likely, history will show that radio amateurs will have been at the leading edge of that future, dreaming and building it, just as they always have done before. Thank you for listening, and I hope you decide to tune in and explore the world of amateur radio to see what it can offer for you, your friends, and your family. 73.